Okay, now with the intermediate zone hitting tutorial, the second half of this video, the first tip is to stop guessing. And no, in the very beginning of this video, I said, you know, on certain counts, you want to guess and you want to do this, you want to do that. Not anymore. Now, what you want to do is you want to stop guessing completely and you're going to want to start beginning what is called tracking. You're going to want to start tracking pitches. And uh, the first trick to that is you have to find a PCI starting point for yourself. Wow, now I got so used to that legend. That's so much slower. Look how early I was. Uh, but anyways, yeah, you want to find a PCI starting point right here. Feels about right to me. Uh, slightly up and in with a righty. I'm almost dead center with a lefty, just very slightly to the right. Uh, so about like this with a lefty, somewhere about right there. And then, uh, and, and then, yeah, so whatever's comfortable for you. I know that McGunsky likes to start his PCI a little lower. I know some people will start at dead center and hit like that. I know that uh, there are other people who do other things. Uh, maybe they even start it on the outside corner and then adjust inside or something like that. But personally, I prefer for lefties to start. Oh, that was a nice little two-seamer there. I prefer to start slightly on the inside half right here and then and then track pitches from there and for righties i like to go a little bit more up and in just to protect against that high and inside fastball now let's talk about handedness now that we have the opportunity uh we have sorry i think i just ran over my dog with my chair uh okay so why is it that we want to have a balanced lineup like i was talking about in the beginning of this video well it's because lefties and righties are completely different uh, it's a completely different game hitting with righties and hitting with lefties with righties uh, you're gonna have less time uh, righty on righty I should say uh, righty on righty you're gonna have less time to adjust to uh, to fastballs you're gonna have less time to swing um, with a lefty you have like a millisecond more time and it makes more of a difference than you would think and uh, also breaking pitches are going to move away from you uh, so if this Lance Lynn threw a, well, he doesn't, let, let's try to find someone who does have a slider. Wait, wait, wait. Who has a slider? Does Kyle Gibson, do you have a slider? Yes. Okay. Kyle Gibson has a slider. So you got to find someone uh, or, uh, you know, if he throws this slider, it's going to be moving away from me. And that is way harder to hit than if you were a lefty and it was moving in towards you. Now, there are some exceptions to this. There are some people out there who, for whatever reason, can hit righty on righty better um, or, you know, hit lefty on lefty better. Uh, I am not one of those people. And that is uh, the vast majority of people aren't are not like that. So, um, so how do you adjust to this? How do you adjust to having less time versus right-handed pitching and, uh, you know, having the breaking ball move away from you? Well, the first thing I would say is avoid swinging at that pitch right there, that pitch that you just saw. That slider on the outside corner moving away from you. Uh, if it's a strike, it's a strike. If it's if it's not, it's not. But really try to avoid swinging at those pitches. There are some people who can get base hits fairly consistently on those pitches. Guys like that are very few and far between. And I promise you, if you're making consistent contact on those pitches, your BABIP on those pitches is going to be exceedingly low. Your batting average on those pitches is going to be very, very low. It's just extremely hard to make consistent or to, to first of all, get your PCI in a good place for that pitch. And second of all, time that pitch perfectly to where you can shoot it into right field. It's very difficult to do. And if your opponent is locating that pitch uh, consistently all day, then, you know, uh, you're probably going to have a bad day. But at that point, maybe you can try to just predict what he's throwing and you know, do something like that. But there aren't many guys who can dot you up that consistently. So just avoid that pitch. But I also want to say, don't, that doesn't mean don't swing at sliders at all. Just don't swing at well located sliders on the outside corner. If a guy hangs a slider uh, over the middle, crush it. That's one of the, I, I hit more home runs on righty righty sliders that get hung all the time. I hit it all the time. Or if they try to backdoor it on you on the inside corner, crush it. If you can time that up, crush it. You'll hit a bunch of home runs that way. But just on that outside corner, you really want to avoid that. 
Another thing righty on righty and lefty on lefty is that you really want to focus on taking away the fastball. And that is because you have less time to react to the fastball. So obviously you're gonna wanna focus on it a little bit more because your opponent knows that you know that you have less time to react to it. So they're, they're gonna kinda pound you with it, you know, occasionally. Uh, they're gonna throw you a lot of them. They're gonna make you uh, pull that fastball. And if you can't pull it, then uh, then they're, they're just gonna win. They're just gonna keep pounding you with it. You're gonna keep popping up. You're gonna keep striking out and uh, it's gonna be no good for you. Okay, now let's talk about opposite-handed uh, hitters. So a righty on lefty or lefty on righty. This is very, very different because one, you're gonna have a little bit more time to adjust to the fastball, and two, uh, any breaking pitches are going to be moving towards you and not away from you. And there are a few implications for this. One is they're way easier to hit. Two is that they is that your opposing uh, pitcher will hang those pitches way more often. You'll get way more hanging sliders or hanging curveballs righty on lefty than you will righty on righty. It's just a lot more uncomfortable to to throw those sliders or those curveballs to an opposite-handed hitter. And uh, and three because of that fact, your opponent is not going to be throwing you that many uh, curveballs and sliders, but you will see your fair share of change-ups and you can adjust to that pitch and since you have a little bit more time to react to fastballs than you do right-handed at this point you really want to focus a little bit more on those off-speed pitches than you do on the fastball and you want to adjust up to the fastball so I'm not saying that you want to sit on off-speed pitches but you do want to have them in the back of your mind more readily than you would as a right-handed hitter, hitter where you're really uh, concerned about the fastball or the sinker or the cutter or whatever. As a lefty, you really want to focus on those off-speed pitches so that you aren't out in front because if they do throw you a fastball, you have just a little bit more time to adjust and make a good swing on the ball. Just like that right there. That was a sinker. I was looking for an off-speed pitch, but he gave it to me. I squared it up, shot it up the middle. That's a good piece of hitting right there. So uh, so yeah, as if you're facing an opposite-handed hitter, focus just a little bit more on those off-speed pitches and adjust to the fastball. Okay, and here are my two most important intermediate zone hitting tips. First, Take away the fastball at the higher difficulties especially. Make sure that your opponent knows that if he throws you a fastball, there is a chance that it's going to get punished. This is going to force your opponent into the uncomfortable position of having to throw you more sliders, more change-ups. He's going to have to mix up his pitches more. He's going to have to do all that jazz because you're not a scrub. He can't just throw you fastball after fastball and have you uh, and have you strike out on it, you know, because you have a very slow bat. So prove to your opponent that you have a quick bat. That you, can, uh, that you can really take that fastball away, even if you really don't, just kind of swing as fast, as, even, even if it makes you look silly, uh, because sometimes trying to take the fastball away intentionally, uh, you can get fooled very badly on all speed pitches. Don't worry about that. Take away the fastball and then worry about that in the later innings, but force your opponent into the uncomfortable position of having to mix his pitches more effectively and having to be more precise with, uh, with where he locates them. And then the second thing is the most important factor in anything in MLB the show anything at all zone hitting anything be patient be patient don't chase the game let the game come to you don't tr tr don't try to go out there and chase runs don't try to be like oh I got to score right now because I'm down by two runs in the third inning you know it doesn't matter let the game come to you let your opponent make mistakes um don't be afraid to uh don't be afraid to watch bad strikes or to or to not swing at bad strikes like that right there like that's a pretty tough pitch for me to hit let's say let's say that i have trouble getting my pci right there to uh to hit the ball i i'm not afraid to let that pitch go you know because i know that if i swing at that it's more than likely just going to be an out because i i struggle with that pitch 
but then uh and, and then if i if i let that pitch go maybe the next pitch he gives me one but it, it, he misses and it goes low and away and i really i hit that pitch really well just like i did there and i get a double out of it so don't be afraid to to not swing at pitches that you don't like even if they are a strike and don't be afraid to strike out looking there are so many players in this game who seem to have this phobia of striking out looking. It, it's like it makes you less of a man or something if you strike out without swinging. It doesn't. If you're willing to take those strikeouts looking, that means that you're a very patient hitter and that you can... Uh, and what and, and what you'll be getting a lot of that other players want that other players won't be getting is a lot of base runners and that is the main goal of MLB the show is to get a lot of base runners that is the name of the game so that when you hit those big home runs whenever your opponent makes those mistakes that you take advantage of instead of hitting solo home runs you're hitting two run three run home runs grand slams you know you're you're making a big impact because the guys before 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 your opponent made that mistake he walked them because you were very patient at the plate it's extremely important and sorry about that I, I i lost my train of thought there for a second but one method that uh, i have to give credit to cardinal bird and to movie gaming about two or three years ago they came up with this method for players who were struggling to uh to be patient at the plate and i used it for a while and it really worked for me the one caveat to this is you do have to be a, a pretty good two strike hitter in order for this method to help you but if you are or you want to learn to be a good uh, two strike hitter employ this method and it'll really help you it's called the two strike method uh for the first three maybe four innings of the game don't do not swing the bat until you have two strikes force your opponent to to run up his pitch count uh, force your opponent to throw strikes make your opponent believe that you are the most patient player in the history of MLB the show and uh, and all of a sudden you're uh, you're, you're gonna be more patient you, you know it's gonna teach you to be more patient as you sit there and you watch all those pitches and everything but it's also gonna tell your opponent man I've got to throw strikes because I can't run my pitch count up I can't burn through this pitcher's energy I can't uh, it, it, this guy is gonna take a walk if, if I end up uh, you know throwing too many balls or whatever so uh, so yeah I've got to throw strikes and, uh, and this year, that's even more important since you have pitcher energy. He's really not going to want to burn through that energy. So by the fourth or fifth inning, you're going to be getting a ton of strikes to play with. And at that point, you can unleash, take advantage, and uh, really start to go to town on him. And uh, it, it's just a great method for teaching you how to be patient. And also, as a, as a little bonus, what you can do... And I'll kind of demonstrate it here while you're using the two strike method. You can just take your finger off the X button, but you can still track pitches with the PCI like that right there. Like I'm not swinging at that pitch because I'm using the two strike method. And uh, but I'm still going to use my PCI because it will help me with my PCI control. It helps me with tracking pitches. This is a great way to practice tracking pitches right here. Just, you know, do what you would always do. And, uh, but, but instead of swinging, you don't until you have two strikes. And then once you have two strikes, you can, uh, you can just go back to swinging normally. And, uh, yeah, really helped me become a more patient hitter. Uh, for those of you who doubt my credentials or whatever on this, I am a very good player, probably a top 50 player, maybe a top 100 player. Uh, all three of the MLB, the show eSport events, I have made the top 32. Unfortunately, I got knocked out in all three tournaments in the top 32, but they were very good games. I got knocked out by Kyle, Kyle next door, your friend Kyle, that guy. He's, he's one of probably the second or third best player in the world. Got knocked out by Coogs, who is a YouTuber that you may have heard of. Um, and I got knocked out by uh, Scuffy, who is a Twitch streamer that, once again, you may have heard of. So, yeah, I, I'm, I'm a pretty good player. Uh, I'm not the best, but I'm definitely not the worst. Um, hopefully, these tips help you. Tomorrow, actually, I don't know if my Master Zone hitting tutorial is going to be coming out tomorrow. It might be coming out the day after that. But uh, either tomorrow or the day after that will be my Master Zone hitting tutorial. Um, it will be the, the super advanced version for people 
who have gotten to the championship series or the upper DS and they're looking to take that next step and make it to the World Series. That next Zoltan hitting tutorial is going to be for you. So be on the lookout for that. I love you guys. I will see you guys later. Uh, check out my Twitch channel at TTV Beanie Antics. Check out my Twitter at Beanie Antics. And uh, I will see you guys later. But until, oh, leave a like on the video. But until then, peace. Yeah.